Okay. Here we go. That's me. Yep. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Fit Five One Three Six Software Engineering. This is week five already. Uh, in this week, we will talk about uh, Agile project management. In the past, we have learned how to elicit the requirement, how to analyze the requirement, how to um, uh, decide the class, decide the diagrams, decide the software, that kind of thing. And now, uh, to deliver the projects in a working product, right? Uh, we need to manage the project really well, and then we will learn how to manage the project. Okay? Uh, yeah. Let's get started. So I think yeah, today we will uh, the the topics uh, that we will cover today include the HI project management in general. Uh, what is the what is a Scrum? What is a Kanban? What is the HI ceremonies? And there are different types of the software contract as well that uh, we will learn. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Click. Um. Yep. So just um. Just a recap again. Uh, I actually made some change in the topic, okay? Uh, which is uh, where this one is a little bit different from uh, what is published in the uh, first week. Uh, so basically, um, last week we learned uh, about the software design, uh, software design and modeling, and uh, this week we will talk about the HI project management. Uh, uh, then next week it will be a mid semester break, so uh, everyone will, will enjoy the holiday, which is good. Uh, week six we will talk about the introduction to software quality and testing, and the week after we will talk about the test driven development, unit testing in Java and Python, and about the uh, uh, the code coverage as well, how to uh, measure the effectiveness of the test case that you write. Uh, week 8 and week 9, we will talk about the uh, <clears throat> black box and the white box testing, how can we generate the test cases. Uh, week 10, we will talk about the software engineering ethics. Okay. Week 11, it will be about the deployment and the DevOps, uh, which is the advanced thing, how can we uh, deploy the, the software at scale. And uh, 12, week 12, uh, we will talk about the advanced topics in SE, and in the plan is that uh, we'll talk about the AI and the software engineering. That means how can we leverage the generative AI for software engineering and how can we, uh, and what does it mean by software engineering, software engineering for the generative AI? How can we deploy a machine learning uh, software at scale, that kind of thing, okay? <clears throat> and just a recap again, uh, um, last week I have seen, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you so much everyone. Uh, I have seen that um, we have we received 61 uh, submissions at the moment. There are a few groups that haven't submitted yet or they will submit late uh, due to uh, uh, many factors whatsoever. So I think I, re I just want to say that I really appreciate uh, all uh, everyone effort who uh, worked tirelessly on the first assignment, which is about requirement gathering and analysis that kind of thing. The second assignment, uh, the second assessment uh, have been released, which is with 15% as well. Uh, it will be about software design. Uh, we will talk about the details of this uh, <clears throat> assessment later as well. And the due date, again, uh, it will be uh, after the mid-semester break. So it will be around uh, week seven, okay? The end of week seven, uh, everyone have to submit this one. And then uh, around week seven, we will release the uh, assessment tree as well, which is about the development process and the artifact. Okay, and the last assessment will be the individual assessment, which is with 30%. It will be about software quality and testing. Okay, I create this one as well uh, for everyone. Probably uh, uh, it will be the detailed assessment regime for the whole unit, right? It's a bit. Uh, uh, late to release to everyone, but anyway, uh, it's better than uh, later, okay? And um, it's better than never, anyway. Um, so what I mean is that <clears throat> the first three assessment, this is the high level, okay? The first three assessment, uh, everything is, uh, in total, it is with 70%, 15, 15, and 40%. It will be under the same uh, uh, project scenario, the Monash Merchant Online Shopping, okay? And for the three assessment here, you practice uh, the whole software development process, right? Starting from the requirement analysis, how to gather the requirement, how to decide the software, and how to develop the software and deploy at the end, okay? 
So the first assessment you have done already and everyone have submitted, uh, which is good. Congratulations. For the assessment too, there will be three tasks, the use case diagram, initial class diagram, and the use case scenario and the sequence diagram. Okay. These three uh, tasks will be submitted uh, around week seven. All right. <clears throat> and after that, uh, after the mid semester break, uh, you will be assigned a few uh, user stories to develop and what I mean is that everyone need to develop that software, okay? The 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 the, the software that we uh, gather the requirement together, and then for the task uh, ta assessment tree, we will evaluate on uh, these three uh, two actually two aspects, okay? First is about the the process, HI software development practices. How will you uh, uh, adopt or yeah? adopt the HI software development process, right? We will look at the Trello board. How do you manage the backlog? How do you prioritize the tasks? That kind of thing. The detail uh, of the uh, assessment sheet will be released later as well. And then around week 12, uh, you need to do the demo uh, of your project as well, of your software, whether you can implement uh, all of the features or not, that kind of thing. And as I mentioned before that, uh, uh, software, we will not work in silo, right? We need to work as a team. So the task three of the assessment tree will be the feedback fruit. So it's, uh, it's called the peer review in the group assessment for all of the assessment here, A1, A2, and A3. Uh, all of this is with 10%. So uh, for this week, we will run the feedback fruit and uh, that will be the 3% for the requirement analysis. That's an assessment one. And around week week eight, we will do the feedback fruit for the three percent uh, <clears throat> software design. This one as well, and for the last week, yeah, we will do the feedback fruit with uh, for the assessment tree. Okay, so in total, will be forty percent, uh, which is about the development process and the artifact. All right, so uh, and then for the last assessment, will be the individual uh, assessment in the ED step. It will be about the software quality and testing. How do you write? How well you can write the unit test, that kind of thing. Uh, we will open uh, two types of the uh, submission, okay? You can use either Java or Python. This is totally fine. We have one task, which is with 10%. Another one is 15. Uh, Pajarism checker will be applied as well. And then we will have an, uh, the last one, ethic quiz, around 5%. There's no exam in this unit. And this is like a individual assessment. You can work, uh, you can work on it at your own time, okay? All right, and everything uh, for the assessment for it is still um, week 14, okay? Uh, any questions so far about the detailed assessment regime for the whole unit? Yeah. Any questions, feel free to ask. Is assessment for open book? Yes, it is open book. That's uh, this is not an exam. It is the the um, the real task. What I mean is that um, <clears throat> you need testing. You need to write a code. You need to write the test case and make sure that you uh, uh, write it uh, uh, correctly as well. How can we prepare for the final exam today? Again, there's no final exam. Okay, there's no final exam in the unit. The unit will be finished by week 14. Is there anything in week 15? No. Okay. So the lecture is finished by week 12. Uh, the only the assessment for uh, will be, uh, it will be released earlier. Let's say week nine. Okay. I, I think I plan to release around week nine. And then you roughly have five weeks uh, to complete. Uh, yeah. So you can either complete in the uh, SWOT work week or you can complete in the week 14 as well. Either way. Yeah. Um, are there any time limit for the assessment for? Oh, very good question. Um, <clears throat> we haven't um, decided yet. We will let you know later. Okay. Is assessment for online? Yes, it will be uh, available in the ED stem. Yeah. So you can just uh, log into the ED stem and uh, there will be one uh, task available for you, the assessment for, and then you can work on it. Yeah. Very easy. At, you can work at your own time, anytime and anywhere. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> so in short, uh, what I mean is that 
uh, for the SS mode, uh, assessment for it will be a little bit uh, technical. That means uh, you need to uh, write some Python code or the Java code as well. You need to write the test cases. If you are not proficient in the programming, try to uh, <coughs> um, brush up your skill uh, uh, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not a lot. I mean, the 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 task here it will be roughly hundred lines of code. It's not like a crazily thousand lines of code. Okay, what will be assessment uh, three task one look like? Task one it will be we will focus on the process. Uh, that I have already created the assessment three. I uh, the detail will be announced later as well. But basically, we look at the process. How do you adopt the AI software development process? How do you uh, assign the tasks in the Trello? Whether the, we will talk about that yeah, later as well. Yeah. What are the assignment three, task one and task two look like? Everyone uh, really wants to know about the ass assessment three. We have to finish the assessment two first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so probably I will try to finalize uh, as soon as possible and then maybe I will let you know. Yeah, probably the question is that you want to know the assessment tree like uh, in the next uh, few days or later. We plan to release around week seven, right? So it will not burden you, but I think it depends on what do you want. It's ready anyway. Yeah. Do you want to release it very soon or later? <clears throat> Let me know in the Zoom chat. Yeah. Soon. Okay. Sure. Why not? Okay. All right. The sooner the better. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I can do that. Uh, it is ready anyway. Uh, all good. Uh, any other questions around the assessment regime? Yep. Before the mid-semester break. Okay. We will do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Any other questions? I hope uh, I clarify everything. All good. Okay, so next, uh, yeah, we will talk about the flux quiz. Um, so I want, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, all of the feedback that you provide in the ED stem, it is read. I read everything, okay, and I just really want to appreciate uh, your feedback as well. And this is some of the feedback that I got, right? Like, uh, they, you guys are so lovely. It was very informative with the flat quiz, and the student asked a lot of uh, interesting questions during the lecture. It is enthusiastic as it always was. I actually like the flat quiz. So in general, everyone really liked the flat, flat quiz. Yeah, but last week, yeah, it was a bit sad that we did not have the flat quiz this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it means a lot to me, you know. I I I just want to uh, thank for your feedback as well, and that's why this week I need to bring the flag quiz back. Yeah, uh, how can we uh, clear lecture without the flag quiz, right? So I already make uh, the identity, uh, make the, some good reputation around that. So I think yeah, this week we, there will be flag quiz as well. Um, yeah, stay tuned, and then we will do that together. Okay, um, in the next few minutes. All right. Okay, I prepared that, uh, the flag quiz today. And yeah, back to the um, uh, general overview of the unit again, right? Uh, in the past few, uh, in the first few weeks, we have talked about the introduction to software engineering. We took, we look at the requirement engineering phase. As a product owner, you want to elicit the requirement, as a client, uh, and the goal of the product owner is that you want to prioritize the backlog so that you can uh, deliver the most valuable products to the clients, right? And then as uh, then we will talk about the project management here. And what I mean is that how can we deliver or prioritize the products, right? That are most valuable to the customer or to the clients. So during the pro uh, project management or product management here, uh, there are lots of activities as part of the air dry, and then we will talk about that as well. Uh, one of them include the sprint planning, sprint review. Uh, we need to prioritize the backlog, that kind of thing. And then, yeah, sorry, we, we normally start from the sprint planning. And then uh, as a team, we discuss together, prioritize the, the sprint backlog, right? What we, we What do we want to deliver in the next sprint? Yeah, and normally the sprint will last uh, one to four weeks. When you 
goes to the sprint, then you start the development, that kind of thing. You can have uh, 24 uh, the daily stand-up meeting for every day as well. That's uh, 24 hours to have a catch-up, that kind of thing. And then by the end of the sprint, you have to do the sprint review and the sprint retool. Sprint review, basically you look at the uh, uh, what you have done, okay? Um, review the, the sprint that you have done, whether the progress is going well or not. And retool is like you look back, whether what went well in the past, uh, what is there anything that we can improve, that kind of thing, okay? And then you can finish the work, all right? But today we'll focus on the project management here. Yeah, the, 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 <clears throat> this step, all right? Okay, of course, when we talk about the AI in the first week lecture, we talk about the introduction to software engineering. Uh, we talk about the AI in general, right? But we didn't go into the detail. What does it mean by AI and what are the core principles of the uh, AI in the software development, okay? So these are the 12 AI principles. The first one, uh, okay, customer satisfaction. So when we work in the AI software projects, we really focus on the customer satisfaction. We want to, we want them to satisfy what uh, uh, on the products that we deliver. Okay, <clears throat> we also adopt the changing requirement as well. When uh, they want to change the requirement, no problem. We want, we want to be AI. So it's not like a waterfall when we sign the contract and everything is done, right? We, we adopt change. We embrace the change as well. Frequent delivery is one of the AI principle as well. That means we want to deliver the working products frequently so we can get the feedback from the customer, right? Whether they, they like the products or not. Is there anything that we can improve or not? That kind of thing. We normally communicate with the client regularly. Uh, let's say this is like a monthly meeting, you know, when we do the sprint review, we uh, we want to demo the, the working products to the customer as well. That's like every uh, two weeks or four weeks. Yeah, that's how we communicate with the client regularly. Support the team members. So we try to support each other. That's an AI. It's not like a, a bossy, uh, or dictator, uh, leadership skill, that kind of thing. We try to be positive, create a positive working environment. All right. Face-to-face <clears throat> -face communication. That's one of the AI principle as well. We normally work, uh, we, whenever we have, uh, when we want to discuss, we want to have a face-to-face -face, uh, communication. So meeting, that kind of thing. We often measure the work progress. Progress is, is measured by the, uh, the, the deliver working software products. Okay. We focus on the development process. Good design. We need to measure the progress as well. And we continue to seeking the results. We always uh, reflect and adjust regularly. Reflect. That's the, that's part of the sprint retrospective. So at the end of the sprint, we will discuss what went, uh, what went, what worked well in the past, what went well in the past, and how can we <clears throat> do it better. In the next sprint, that kind of thing. All right, <clears throat> that's in short that the, the high level summary of the uh, twelve AI principles. Uh, next slide, I actually have a very good video uh, for everyone, so I'm gonna open this one. Yep, and let's see. Yeah. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated with Knowledge Hut. Hello and welcome to Knowledge Hut. In this video, we will be discussing the 12 Agile Principles, which are followed in Agile Project Management. But before watching this video, we recommend you watch our previous videos on the four values of the Agile Manifesto, as those four values set the base for these 12 principles. Now that you are aware of the values of the Agile Manifesto, let us understand the 12 principles of the Agile Project Management. First Principle our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. It's Sorry, what's wrong? <laughs> Let's try again. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated with Knowledge Hut. Hello and welcome to Knowledge Hut. <clears throat> In this video, we will be discussing the 12 Agile Principles, which are followed in Agile Project Management. But before watching this video, we recommend you watch our previous videos on the four values of the Agile Manifesto, as those four values set the base for these 12 principles. Now that you are aware of the values of the Agile Manifesto, let us understand the 12 principles of the Agile Project Management. 
First principle. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. It's true that it takes a lot of time and effort to build a product, but at the end of the day, what makes a customer happy is a valuable working software. This is why the principle emphasizes on early and continuous delivery of the software. Second principle, welcome changing requirements even late in development. Agile processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Agile believes in empiricism. We become more knowledgeable when we have spent time working on something. In the beginning, we may have a lot of knowledge, but not as much as we have after the commencement of work. Similarly, our customers understand their needs even more clearly after seeing the increment provided by us. This is why this principle welcomes changing requirements from the customers so that the process remains empirical and the customer gets what is required to stay in the competition. Third principle, deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale. This principle emphasizes on the frequent delivery of product as frequent delivery helps the development process to be more agile. With frequent delivery, you mitigate the risks in your release, you get faster feedback from the customer, and hence you can bring changes in the product before it's too late. Fourth principle. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. This principle helps in keeping the business aspect and the technical aspect of the product to the same page. When business people and developers work together, they gain a common understanding of the direction towards which the project is moving. The development team also gets an end user view from the business side. It brings transparency and fluency in the whole development process. Fifth principle, build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. This principle emphasizes on having motivated team members. When people are motivated to do their work, they produce results which can never be produced by people who are forced to get the job done. Therefore, give them the environment and support they need so that they can create superior products. Sixth principle, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. Most of the communication in a project is about project process or project content. It is crucial for the success of the project that the development team understands the right information correctly. Written communication is prone to ambiguity, whereas face-to-face -face conversation provide the ground for prompt clarification and quicker communication. As a result, product development becomes faster and precise. Seventh principle, working software is the primary measure of progress. As we know that working software is most valuable for the customer, the planning of construction of the product has no direct benefits for them until a working software is not given in their hands. Therefore, measuring of project's progress should be based on the actual working software. A software is not finished when it is successfully tested and delivered. It is finished when it is tested and accepted by the end user. Eighth principle, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Software development is like running a marathon. You have to maintain the speed, but you shouldn't run so fast that you exhaust yourself. Similarly, sustainable development happens when you do constant production of software features during a long lasting period. Ninth principle, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Agile focuses on development of software like a craftsmanship rather than just working on a regular task. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design helps in bringing this craftsmanship to the project. 10th principle, simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. More features makes a product more complex. Complex codes are difficult to test, maintain, and develop. Sometimes products have features which are so rarely used that their development and maintenance results in a negative ROI. Therefore, it is better to create a product which does a few things extraordinarily and is completely useful for someone rather than creating a software which tries to do everything, does nothing extraordinarily, and is not useful to anyone. 11th Principle 
The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. A self-organizing team is one that does not depend on or wait for others to assign work. Instead, these teams find their own work and manage the associated responsibilities and timelines. They take on the responsibility of choosing the most effective and efficient way to complete their work and regularly look for ways to improve through experimentation. While self-organizing teams don't require a manager to assign work, set deadlines, and so on, they do require a mentor who can help grow their skills. Having self-organizing team promotes collaboration, teamwork, competency, regular growth, motivation, and commitment. And hence, the best architecture, requirements, and designs emerge from such teams. The 12th principle. At regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Agile encourages continuous improvements and productivity. When a team reflects on how to become more effective and adjusts its behavior accordingly at regular intervals, it brings continuous improvement in itself and increases its productivity. So these were the 12 principles of Agile. We hope this video helped you in taking your knowledge in Agile further. Okay, that's right. Oops. Any questions about the uh, 12 uh, HR principles? I think uh, it is very, um, uh, that video is quite informative and uh, it summarizes everything, the, all of the key points. Uh, but next, uh, we will talk about how can we manage the project based on that uh, 12 HR principles, right? So normally when we talk about the HR project management, we need to, uh, we need to understand what is the iron triangle here. Normally, there are the three uh, key aspects when we manage the project. The first thing is the cost. The second one is the time. And the last one is the scope. Okay. So basically, uh, the iron triangle here, these are the constraints. All right. Okay. But before we move on, what is the question? Is it true that the most important thing about the HISDLC is the manifesto? Uh, not how can it's hard to say whether this is the most important thing or not um what i mean is that uh in real world practices the principle uh is just only the guideline but whatever happened in practice can be the other thing as well what i mean is that uh, in real world HR software projects, right? So in the probably there will be some video in uh, with the Monash E solution that kind of thing. What we have learned so far is that whatever written in the book, it should be the first initial uh, uh, framework that we should adopt. So when you start a software development project, you may want to follow by the book. Okay, start the HR manifesto, HR principles, that kind of thing. Follow the book. But once you learn, once you work on that software project, you may make some change to the process as well to make sure that it is a fit with the team, you know? So it really depends. It doesn't mean that it is uh, something that we need to strictly follow, okay? But you should adopt and uh, make some change that is uh, more suitable to the team as well. All right, is that, uh, I don't know whether I answer your questions or not. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So back to the project management. All right. So that th this is uh, the three key aspects that we need to balance. Okay. The first one is the cost, the time, and the scope. This is the budget that we have. And once we minimize the cost, uh, minimize the time with the smallest scope, then we can achieve the highest quality product, and uh, the the and then we can deliver the the software project on time as well. All right. These are the three key factors. What do we mean by the scope, right? So normally when we elicit the requirement, the scope can be like a, a excessively large as well, you know? Uh, but at the end of the day, we cannot uh, deliver all of the features because the scope is too large. We need to prioritize. That's why we need to prioritize that which feature, features that are the most important thing. For, think about the uh, 12 HR principles, right? Uh, we need to uh, deliver the most uh, valuable products. Uh, what are the essential features that is must have? What is uh, what brings the, the value to the customer the most, right? So we need to focus on that. 
in the scope. Okay. Uh, for example, let's say we want to develop the Monash Merchant uh, online shopping that kind of thing. Login is a classic feature, and it doesn't highlight any key point about the uh, the online shopping system. You know, login is a classic feature. So uh, probably we need to think about whether it is the uh, the the key feature that we should include in the software or not, right? Okay. So, but at the end of the day, when the scope is increased, then probably you need to think about uh, the other two constraints as well, which is the time and the cost, right? So that that's the scope. When we prioritize the scope, we need to think about what is the the complexity of the project and how many features that we need to deliver. What is the outcome? Would that bring any strength to the uh, project or not? And well, you need to think about the details. There are so many way uh, to. It is quite hard to define the scope, right? Let's say uh, you you talk to the CEO. Hey, CEO, tell you, hey, look, you know, we need an app. But what kind of app? You need to think about the, the, the scope and the features that you need to develop. And it is too large. So at the end, you need to prioritize what features that are most valuable to the to the customer. Okay? Okay. Yep. And can someone please mute as well? Hello, can you please mute? Or they can choose to browse by uh, category. And there's and there are some categories as well. There's also. Okay, all right. Should be good now. <laughs> okay, next, yeah, uh, the time, right? So when you manage the project, you need to consider the, the, the schedule, the time frame. Normally, when you uh, start the uh, software projects, right? Um, normally, customer will ask you, hey, when you can deliver the software product? Uh, we are in the real world business. We need to deliver something. We need to release the, the app uh, to the uh, public, right? So that's why timeline is uh, is one of the top constraints uh, when we manage the project. Yeah, and most of the project they have deadline. Yes, uh, as I mentioned before, and when we change to the scope and the resource, uh, that kind of thing, it can affect the project timeline as well. Change in the resource, what does it mean? It means that... Uh, Let's say uh, you have like a two years uh, software development project. It's about the developer turnover, you know? It can be about the budget as well, the, the money constraint resource. So that means uh, when you start working on the project, maybe some developers would like to uh, uh, leave the project, that kind of thing, then that, that can affect the project timeline as well, you know? Or the company... Uh, goes into the, the liquidation as well. That could be a reason up about the, the project management as well. Uh, the, these kind of factors will impact the project timeline, right? Okay, and what are the elements of time uh, that we need to consider? Which, uh, for example, we need to think about what is the overall project timeline? What is the, uh, how, how many hours that we need to work for the project? That kind of thing, you know? For each of the feature, we need to estimate the effort uh, if we cannot accurately estimate the effort, how many hours that we need to uh, to implement that kind of feature, it may be uh, a little bit hard to manage the project as well. Okay, so uh, as part of the assessment tree, we will try to understand how do you manage the project as well. It will be part of the assessment. Okay, so you can deliver everything, deliver all of the features on time. All right. Now, next, uh, we need to look at the cost. Of course, uh, nothing, we, we cannot work for free. Everything comes at a cost, right? Uh, when we develop a piece of software, we need a budget as well. How many developers need to work on a project? Uh, what is the cost of that uh, software developers? Let's say one app, you require five uh, software engineers. Each engineer costs 100K for one year. This is roughly $500,000 already. How expensive it is in real world scenarios, right? So this is a human labor cost is not that uh, it's not cheap at all think about Quantas application Quanta, uh course application you look at the app it looks like a simple application but actually it costs like several million dollars to develop that kind of application it, and it's not just only the app 
Think about the back end. Think about the the infrastructure. That's a several several million, ten million dollars. It is so expensive, right? Uh, yeah. Somehow it is more expensive than the house, <laughs> you know. So and when we manage the project over time, right? One thing that we need to uh, be careful is about the scope creep. Okay. What does it mean by the scope creep? Okay. These are the four causes of the scope creep. First. You didn't define the project scope clearly. Let's say, hey, we want to deliver the Monash Merchant uh, shopping online uh, system. We want to have uh, 10 numbers of features. And then tomorrow, oh, we're going to add more. We're going to add more. The scope is not uh, defined clearly. And then uh, you cannot, uh, Im when you don't think in detail, right? If you don't think uh, in very critically about the, the scope, then you may not be able to manage the project really well. Because later on, you may discover that, hey, look, oh, maybe we forget uh, some of this feature. We need to include it as well. Right? If you don't manage the project really well, poor project management practices, if you don't manage the project really well, it can go into the scope creep as well. Like a proper communication between the stakeholder and the project. Right? When you develop the piece of software, you uh, we will not work in silo. We need to communicate regularly with the customer, communicate regularly among the team as well. Hey, what are you developing now? What are the features? What is your responsibility? Are you on track or not? You need to keep track everything. We need to work as a team. Communication is the key. We cannot work in silo, okay? Inconsistency in managing change in the uh, project scope, right? So how do you manage the change? That kind of thing. So if uh, we are not managing this kind of factors really well, it can cause the scope creep as well. And when what by what does it mean by the scope creep? It means that it is a gradual expansion of the uncontrolled changes in the project scope, like uh, uh, like uh, Incoming new features, requirement, deliverables beyond the initially agreed upon boundaries. If you don't set the boundaries, scope is like boundaries. If you don't set it properly, you you, you will not uh, able to uh, like deliver everything. Or you know, yeah. So that's why when we draw the use case, we need to define what is the boundary of the system, you know. This is uh, number one, number two, three, four use cases. And the rest, we don't care. The rest, we, uh, we are done, okay. This is what we need to focus on, the, the top priority, that kind of thing, okay. Yep, that, that's the scope creep, okay. So when you uh, start working on a software project, Make sure you define the scope clearly. What are the features that you want to include in the app? Okay, otherwise you will end up in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, yep, uh, and just want to emphasize again that the scope creep is very bad. Uh, it's bad for everyone, right? Uh, it impacts your team. It impacts the end user, your company as well. Project stakeholder will not be happy. And you as a project manager, you may not be happy or satisfied with yourself as well because we cannot deliver the project on time within the budget, time constraint, that kind of thing, you know? Okay. But how to manage the project uh, effectively, right? There are some framework and the method that have been uh, proposed already that uh, follow the 12 AI principles. And uh, the, what we are going to include today is uh, we will focus on two uh, framework, the Scrum and the Kanban, okay? So we will start with the Scrum first and, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I encourage that everyone will use a Scrum for uh, software for within this unit, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, Scrum. Okay, what is that? Scrum, right? Normally, uh, in details, okay? Uh, let me think. What is the motivation here? Okay, in complex work, more is unknown than known. This is in reality. We, we, don't, we don't know most of the thing more than we know, okay? For example, when you start develop the app, uh, if you don't analyze the requirement, right? You never thought about, oh, we need to handle the, uh, what is that, the multi-factor authentication or not for the login. Do we need to use the uh, email address as a username or should we just use the username? How can we decide the class? How, what are the data attributes that we are going to store? That kind of thing. There are so many unknown. This is like ha what happened in real world, right? The unknown is discovered by releasing done increments early and often. 
because uh, for the assessment one, you have analyzed the requirement already. That's why you start to think about what is uh, what is the unknown thing and whether you should care about it or not, right? And this is so fantastic. I have seen the 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 report, the the submission already. It looks really good, right? You everyone goes into the detail and. Another unknown thing is about the acceptance criteria, right? When, when you don't develop the application, you have no idea how to test it. How can you ensure that the end users satisfy the app, satisfy the feature that we develop here? So that's why you need to come up with the acceptance criteria, right? With this increment, we validate the assumption, we learn what is needed and avoid the risk of spending time and money on the wrong things. That's why we, when, uh, that's why we need to do the task prioritization. We will talk about that later. As a result, we can deliver more values to our stakeholders sooner. When we prioritize the task, we know what the client wants, then we can deliver the most important thing to the end user, to the customer, to the client. Okay, So communication with the clients are the top number one priority. Okay, How to start working on this scrum process. Okay. There are so many stakeholders. Okay, stakeholder here could be uh, the customer, the business people, whatsoever. At the beginning of the sprint, uh, stakeholder, the product owner, the scrum master, whatsoever, they need to uh, brainstorm and discuss together. This is what you have done in the uh, assessment one. Think about what is the product goal, what is the vision, what is the goal, what is the outcome, what are we, what are we going to deliver, what is the epic, what are the features, what are the acceptance criteria. You define the roadmap, right? This is what we want. This is the application, okay? And then you come up with lots of product backlog. What, this is the goal that we want to do. This is the vision that we want to do. And this is the outcome that we want to deliver. There are so many tasks and many things. More than 20, 30 things that we need to do. That's the backlog, okay? Then you need to prioritize which one that you want to do first, okay? So once you at, at the beginning, right? At the beginning of, of the sprint, you have this is a, the product backlog. You need to create the sprint goal, okay? One sprint lasts for two weeks or four weeks. That can it depends. For at the beginning of, of the sprint, it's called sprint planning. This is one of the HI ceremonies, okay? At the sprint planning, we need to prioritize. Uh, we need to uh, think about what is the goal of the sprint. What are the features that we are going to deliver? What are the backlog for this sprint? Within the two weeks, what are we going to focus? Okay, these are the tasks that we want to do. All right. Then we do, we, we already finished the sprint planning. Then every day, okay, we can do the daily scrum. Hey, uh, let's say this is the goal that we want to do, okay? During the daily scrum, hey, what are you, what are you going to do today? This is the to-do. What are you doing at the moment? Is there any roadblocks or not? What you have done yesterday? What are you going to do this uh, today or tomorrow? That kind of thing. Have it meet the definitions of done. Okay, this is a daily scrum. You can have a a meeting, scrum meeting every day, daily as well. After you finish the development by uh, two weeks or four weeks, after you finish the sprint, you need to do the sprint review. That means you present the product to the customer, to the clients, right? So you have already defined the definitions of done. As I mentioned before. The feature will not be developed until, uh, no, sorry. The feature will not be considered as done until the customer or the end users accept it. Okay. That's why we have the acceptance criteria, right? We consider that feature is done when the user, the end users accept it. Okay. Yep. So the sprint review, we present, do the demo to the end users, uh, to the clients. And then once they are happy, then uh, go back to the team, right? Back to the team, and then we can have the sprint retrospective. This is a meet the scrum team. We have the product owner, developers, and the scrum master, okay? These three groups of people will brainstorm and discuss together what uh, went well in the past, how can we improve it better, all right? This is a general scrum framework, okay? And to uh, uh, follow this scrum framework, we need to un uh, it is designed to follow these five values, okay? Commitment, focus, respect, courage, and openness. It is a transparent process. We need to be open. We need to courage to make some change. 
or we need to uh, and we need to respect with each other as well. It's about focus. We need to focus on uh, the sprinkle. This is what we want to deliver. Don't lose the track. All right. And once we commit that, hey, uh, during the sprint planning, right, we set up the goal. This is what we need to deliver. That's a commitment. Once we make the commitment, we need to make it done. Okay. That's a, a key point of the uh, Scrum framework. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions so far? with the scrum. Any questions? No? Okay. Then I'm going to move on. <laughs> Surprisingly, I already <laughs> described everything in one slide. <laughs> okay. This, so uh, after this will be just a quick uh, recap. All right. So Scrum basically, uh, by the definition, it is an iterative incremental framework for project and the product uh, development. Iterative, that iteration, like a sprint, you know. Increment, it means that you incrementally deliver the product to the customer, to the end users, okay? That's why it's called iterative and the incremental framework. If you want to learn more about the Scrum, you can uh, follow this book as well, uh, the scrumprimer.org, okay? It, uh, it provides a very useful information as well. So, uh, in short, it's not a programming method. It's not even specific to IT. Uh, it is a way to organize groups of people to deliver something. There's a question in the YouTube uh, uh, video that I published as well. What is the difference between the project management and the software engineering, right? That's a very good question and I love it. So to me, I would say that it is interrelated uh, to each other, but it's not the same thing. Software engineering is about how can we engineer the software? How can we develop, so develop software? at the lowest cost within the budget constraint at the highest quality, that kind of thing. That's why we need to engineer. It's not just develop the piece of software. If we just develop the piece of software, then we can just develop for 10 years, right? But it will not work in reality. But to engineer the software in the due to the loss of constraint, like budget, the cost, the quality, that kind of thing, the scope, right? We need to manage the project really well. So I would say that project manage, uh, management could be part of the software engineering. How can we deliver the software uh, at the highest value? So we need good project manager, good project management skill as well, okay? Yep. So that's why Scrum is part of the uh, AI software development. Okay. How can we develop software using the AI practices? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scrum in one picture, maybe uh, in chart, the product owners talk to everybody, everybody involved in the project. They need to figure out uh, what do they want and push their requirement into a product backlog. List the design feature. This is what you do in the uh, uh, assessment one, right? You elicit the requirement, create the backlog in the Trello, and this is uh these are the requirements, these are, these are the tasks, these are the features that we need to develop. And of course, this is this is not an uh, a one once off activity. It can it is the uh, you you can continue uh uh you can continuously update the Trello board. Okay, uh, it's not the one off thing, right? And at the start of each iteration, the team collectively decide how much the product backlog uh, they will implement. This goes to a sprint backlog. As I mentioned before, this part, sprint planning, you need to create the sprint backlog. At the beginning of the sprint, what are the sprint goals? Uh, what are the tasks that you are going to deliver? Okay. What are the tasks that you want to uh, develop? That kind of thing. Okay. Then the team start implement the features from the sprint backlog. Okay. Sprint backlog again. Start implementing from the sprint backlog, not from the product backlog. Let's say the sprint you want to develop the login feature, and some way somehow the one of the developer, hey, look, I want to develop something from the product backlog. That's not aligned with the sprint goal, right? So basically, you uh, implement something that is uh, not uh, discussed at the beginning. So we go back, focus. We need to stay focused, okay? So the Scrum framework help you stay focused. Yeah very, very important. 
Yep, and then during the implementation, during the sprint, you can have the daily stand-up meeting as well during the sprint. Uh, this will ensure that the team members know what everybody is up to and who is need of help, you know. Um, yeah, and then after the sprint, uh, you can uh, do the product review, often with the product owner, and you can have the retrospective meeting. How can we make our process more efficient as well? Within the team, normally there are many stakeholders. One uh, AI software development team, okay? Normally it consists of first the Scrum Master, the product owner, the team members. Normally there are seven uh, plus or minus two people, but at least uh, there must be Scrum Master, product owner, and the team members, okay? And we will have client as well. Product owner will work uh, close, closely with the client. And there could be some other people in the organizations as well, like uh, the senior management or the executive, okay? What is a Scrum Master? Why do we need it? So basically, the Scrum Master, they are not the same as a traditional project manager, right? The big difference is that uh, Scrum Master... They want to help teams uh, to come to uh, come to the consensus rather than making the decision or issuing commands. What I mean is that Scrum Master, they are the facilitator. Facilitator, it means that they try to facilitate the team, the process. Make sure that we follow the Scrum process, okay? In the, uh, 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 like, a, uh, like, um, uh, at the beginning of the software projects or new software companies, right? They are not very proficient in the Scrum framework, that kind of thing. The Scrum Master may be an important role, okay? So we need a Scrum Master to facilitate the team, okay? Help everyone follow the process. But in a more like um, a well-established software development projects, maybe they don't need that because they are very proficient in the Scrum process already. So this one, again, this is by the book. This is what happened in real world, but it doesn't mean that every companies, every organization, or every projects they need to follow this process. All right, it really depends on the context. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. That's the the role of the scrum master, right? Uh, the goal, okay, key important part of the scrum master, facilitation. Okay, facilitate the scrum process. Okay, they have to act as a servant leader. And what is the servant leadership? Okay. There are different types of the leadership skill, right? But servant leadership, it means that they try to uh, support the decisions of the team and the product owner rather than issuing the command. They don't say that they, they, the Scrum Master, they don't have the right to say, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. We don't do like that, okay? They only facilitate the team. Um, so they help team understand the agile and the scrum principle, how they impact the team activities, that kind of thing. They help team members who are new to agile learn to do something, right? Learn what to do. As I, as I mentioned, Scrum Master is very uh, suitable for the new team, new project. The project with the new, uh, they, they just start with the agile software development practices, okay? Yep. So they try to help product owner manage the backlog. They try to make sure that they understand it well enough to maximize the values, that kind of thing. And they help uh, to select the priorities uh, for the sprint as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, facilitation as a key point here. Uh, and when, when, when we, when, what I mean is that facilitation, it means that you want to make the, the team feel uh, calm and cozy. You want to make the collaboration very easy. You want to increase the communication among the teams. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's more like a, I don't know how to say facilitation. Yeah. And, uh, whenever there are some, uh, argument among the team members, so the Scrum Master will help this part, you know. So they try to prevent the discussion from degenerating into the argument. Uh, they try to help team achieve consensus rather than making all of the decisions. Uh, they act as a workshop. Uh, no, so uh, so let's say in, in your group, probably uh, within this unit, right, within this environment, I will try to be... Uh, myself, the workshop facilitator, I will try to be the scrum master for your project as well. And then in your project, you can have the product owner and the uh, development team, all right? Okay, what, who, who is the product owner actually? Yeah. So they are responsible for deciding the content of the product backlog. They uh, decide what goes into the product backlog uh, and 
or based on the business value or the return of investment, that kind of thing, you know. So they act closely with the customer, okay. Product owner can be the customer as well. It really depends, okay. Uh, the product owner tells the team what to build for each iteration. Yeah, that's the product owner role here. Uh, who are they? Maybe I will go to here, you know, product owner. Define what goes into the product backlog, okay? And the team and the scrum master try to facilitate what is the next sprint? Uh, what what are we going to deliver in the next sprint? Okay, make sense? Yep. Okay, where are we? Product owners, okay. Yep, so the key point for the product owner is that uh, they are responsible for maintaining the product backlog, all right? And then the team members, the scrum team. So they are all developers, uh, they could be a uh, designer, UX, UI, everyone. Uh, they work in a cross-functional team. There are different roles, you know, yeah. And as I mentioned before, we will not work in silo in business. A silo is a system or group that has a sole access to a particular skill set or kind of data, right? In the past, like waterfall model, right? We call QA department, dev department, requirement department. It's like a de the department. They really work in silo. QA never talk to the department. Department. Uh, no, sorry. QA never talk to the dev team. Dev team never talk to the QA team. And there are lots of issues around that, right? Uh, developers develop something. QA has to test the other thing. They, they don't know what exactly the requirement is because they don't talk to each other. Differently in the Scrum team at the beginning of the sprint. Everyone comes together and discuss and brainstorm, right? This is the, the feature that we are going to develop. How to develop? What are we going to test? How are we going to test that kind of thing? So we know in advance, right? That's why that, that's a good thing about the Agile Scrum, okay? Yeah, and as I mentioned before, uh, there are lots of uh, potential problems in the AI teams, right? What will the team DBA do if a sprint doesn't touch the database? So yeah, if you don't talk to each other, you don't know what to do, right? That's why we need to use the AI software development team, uh, development practices, okay? Roughly one hour, we're going to do a flag quiz, okay? So everyone, can you please go to uh, this link, uh, flags.qa slash mt? Eight and G two. Okay. So uh, a question in the Zoom chat. Typically, should each team member take turns serving as the Scrum Master? Uh, I mean, in your assessment, probably yes, you can. Why not? We we we. Uh, we didn't uh, assess around that, okay? But you, it's, it's a good practice that you should try. Yeah, I highly recommend. Can we carry out assess, assignment two with mastering topics of week four and week five? Or we need week six content to accomplish assessment two? No, uh, the lecture content today is for assessment three, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, before we move to the Kanban, then we're going to do the flag quiz. And yep, as usual, you know, uh, I need to click uh, start. So, okay, we're going to start the flag quiz in three, two, one. All right. According to the AI manifesto, what should be the primary measure of progress? Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have 33 people have uh, have answered. Maybe I will, uh, I'm gonna pause this question in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so let's see the result. What is the answer? Working software, yes, that's right. So just want to emphasize again, the primary measure of progress in the AI manifesto is the working software. AI, 
we will not value the yeah working software over document uh, comprehensive documentation. That's right. Thank you for the uh, the, the comment in the Zoom chat. That's right. So clearly, A is not the answer, right? Agile does not value the comprehensive documentation at all. Agile, we adopt uh, the the requirement change, so we don't need to strictly following the plan, right? The real progress is the working software every sprint okay not the deadline as well okay next thank you which hr principles of the hr manifesto emphasize the importance of self-organizing team okay this is a little bit hard yeah for this question self-organizing team yeah which principle which is related to a self-organizing team. I would say that um, the answer to this question is part of the, the video. Yeah? The video mentioned something around the self-organizing teams. Okay, uh, If you remember, then you can answer this one. All right. Yep. Let's take a look at the video. Mm -hmm. I think probably we don't have time. Yep. So I'm gonna pause the, the this question in five, four, three, two, one. All right. Let's see the answer. I think the answer should be C. Okay, see, yeah, that's right. Okay, so build projects around motivated individuals, give them the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. That's the key point of the self-organizing team. Self-organizing, it means that uh, we don't need to really assign what do you need to do. You know, we, we need to, but it's not the, the key point. Uh, but self-organizing, it means that we know what we want to do. What is my role? What is my responsibility? I am self-motivated. Uh, I can self-organize myself. Uh, I just need to know. Uh, uh, I just need uh, the good environment and the support. And then uh, we can trust them to uh, get the job done. Okay. It is part of the video. Okay. You can take a look at it later. All right. Next question. In the HI manifesto, what is value more than the contract negotiation? What is value more than the contract negotiation? Hmm. What is that? Do we have answers in this slide or not? I think... Uh, no. Mm -hmm. What is value more than the contract negotiation? What is that? Clearly not the dog, all right? <laughs> I hope no one answered the dog. Okay, I'm gonna pause this question in five, four, three, two, one. Yep, let's see the results. Okay, uh, yeah, customer collaboration over is more value is more valuable than the contract negotiation, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so because uh, when when we negotiate on the contract, is about uh, you know, it's like you try to finalize the scope whatsoever, right? But uh, at the end of the day, we need to, uh, because HI, we embrace change. We need to uh, work closely with them, work closely with the customer. Communication is the king here, okay? So customer collaboration is value more than the contract negotiation. All right, next. What are the three constraints in the project management commonly represented as a triangle? Oh, I talked about this before. The iron triangle of the project management. If you remember correctly, which one? Okay. This is the easiest question ever. Yep, okay, I'm gonna pause now. 
five, four, three, two, one. Yep. Let's see the result. Should be A clearly. Thank you, everyone. Got it. <laughs> 100% correctly. <laughs> well done. All right. Next, uh, in project management, what does the term scope creep refer to? Yeah. What is that? Scope creep. Yeah. Unexpected delays in the project timeline, unauthorized change and or addition to the project scope, a sudden increase in the project cost due to inflation. Huh. What is that? Scope creep. Okay. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Let's see the result. The answer should be B boy. All right. It's about an authorized change or addition to the project's code. So why is not the unexpected delay? I would say that expected delay could be the consequence of the scope creep. Because we got the scope creep, yeah, there are lots of addition and authorized like unexpected changes or addition to the project scope, right? Then it could lead to the unexpected delay. So delay is the cause of the, uh, no, is the consequence of the scope creep. Okay. Yep. Next. Who are the three roles uh, defined in the scrum? Oh, I love this question. Okay. Very easy again. I hope uh, we'll get 100% correct answer. Who are they? The three main roles in the scrum. I mentioned million times already. Okay. Da 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 da. Okay. Pause. Three, two, one. Yep. Okay. B-boy, thank you, that's right. So the three main roles in the Scrum framework is the Scrum Master, who act as a, a Scrum facilitator, try to facilitate the Scrum. They are not the project manager at all. Scrum Master, facilitate the Scrum process. And in the well-established company, okay, they may say that this is one of the uh, useless position in the whole wide world, okay, because they are very proficient in the Agile Scrum. But for the new project in the Scrum process, right, Who for the new project, this role is extremely, extremely important. So we cannot miss it at all. We cannot get the Scrum right without the Scrum Master, okay. Product owner act as a client, okay? They manage the product backlog, that kind of thing. And the dev team, they are the cross-functional team with the UX, UI designer, uh, software engineers, and uh, um, QA, uh, whatever, okay? They work on the development. Mm -hmm. All right, next. Uh, oh, <laughs> what is the primary responsibilities of the product owner in Scrum? I emphasize million times, okay? I hope to get 100% correct. Yeah. What is the primary responsibility of the product owner in Scrum? What is that? Okay, I'm gonna pause it now. Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, product owner, of course. C, choice C. <laughs> okay. To facilitate the Scrum event, that must be a Scrum Master. All right. Product owner, product. Focus on the product. Maximize the value of the product and the work with the development team. Okay. They don't write the code. Okay. They don't write the code. The code is developed by the dev team. All right. Next. Yep. What is the purpose of the sprint in Scrum? Hmm. What is the purpose of the sprint? Why do we need sprint? Mm -hmm. Why do we need that? Okay, I'm gonna pause now. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep. Yep, to create potentially shippable product. 
increment right so actually the main goal of the sprint is to deliver the working software incrementally deliver the working software in a more in an iterative way that's why they said uh, scrum is an iterative and incremental uh, framework okay uh, to plan the entire project uh, actually no sprint is just a two week or four week sprint uh, it's not for the entire project to review the project progress that's the sprint review okay uh, to gather the requirement of course not okay yep what is the duration of a typical sprint in scrum oh oh <laughs> that's a bug i forget to hide the poll results okay <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. What is the duration of a typical sprint in Scrum? Mm -hmm. You guys are so fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna pause now and see the result. <laughs> okay. Two uh two weeks. Okay. This is a typical sprint. Uh, and then in your assessment tree, I encourage to uh use the two week sprint as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than one month. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible for removing obstacles or impediment that affects the development team progress? Yeah, who? When the team got some roadblocks, so who will help them to, uh, yeah, remove the the roadblocks or the obstacles that kind of thing? Scrum Master, Product Owner, Dev Team, Stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I love everyone here. Alright, 22 people have answered. Thank you for your active participation. I really enjoy my lecture. I'm gonna pause it now. One, two, three. Yep. Let's see the result. Of course, remove the obstacle. Should be Scrum Master. That's right, Scrum Master, okay? So most of the students got the, the correct answer, okay? Clearly not the product owner. Product owner, product. They own the product. They they need to uh, prioritize what uh, what will be in the backlog, that kind of thing. Not the dev team, not the stakeholder. Mm -hmm. there, it's not their respons responsibility. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the sprint review in Scrum? Uh-huh. In the agile ceremonies, right? You have the sprint planning, sprint review, sprint reto, okay? Daily scrum meeting, that kind of thing. What is the purpose of the sprint review? Hmm. To inspect the work completed during the uh, sprint with the stakeholders to discuss the progress with the stakeholder to plan the next sprint to review the product backlog. A little bit tricky, this one. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna pause it now. One, two, three, okay. What is the result, the, the answer here? Yeah, so actually the main goal, I think most of the students got it right. The main goal of the sprint review is to inspect the work completed during the sprint with the stakeholder, right? But to discuss the progress of the project. This is for the whole project. Probably is not part of the sprint review, actually. Sprint review, we only focus on the sprint. What you have done over the past two weeks, you deliver, you demo to the client and see whether it is done and completed or not, right? Everything is on track or not, but just only the sprint, not the whole project, not the progress of the whole project, okay? Yep. All right, next. What does the development team do during the sprint reto? Oh, wow. Okay, what do they do? Review the product with the stakeholder. Review the sprint progress and discuss ways to improve. Will they plan the next sprint? Or review the product backlog and prioritize items? Mm -hmm. What are they doing here? Yeah. Sprint Reto. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pause in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. 
So the answer should be uh, B boy, right? Review the sprint progress and discuss ways to improve. Yeah, eighty percent of the students got it right. Review the pr product backlog and prioritize items. That's the sprint planning. That's how you plan the sprint, right? You you prioritize with uh, which one you want to uh, what uh, to uh, which uh, backlog that you want to uh, put or move to the sprint goal. That kind of thing. Okay, that's. All right. Okay. Next, what is the Kanban? All right. Maybe probably I'll go back to the lecture. I have only forty-five minutes left. I need to make it quick now. Mm -hmm. Kanban. That's another framework that uh, follow the twelve HR principles as well. Okay. So, uh, Kanban. It is originally uh, originated from uh, Japan in nineteen fifty. It is uh, basically uh, created uh, by the Toyota. It is for the industrial engineering, uh, that manufacturing, that kind of thing. Uh, it adopts the lean manufacturing uh, principles, okay? Uh, and the key part of the Kanban is that uh, they call it is a pool system. That means, in short, Kanban focus on the flow of the work, okay? Uh, they, they like they try to minimize the waste during the the the, the process that can kind of be. But I think in short, let's take a look at this video from uh, Atlassian here, right? Uh, what is the Kanban? Mm -hmm. Kanban is a work management system designed to help you visualize your work, limit work in progress, and maximize efficiency, which we call flow. Kanban is the Japanese word for visual signal. With so many of us working in services and technology, oftentimes our work is invisible or intangible. Kanban helps you visualize your work so you can understand it better, show it to others, and keep everyone on the same page. Most teams realize this benefit by building a Kanban board, filling it with Kanban cards, and setting up a work in progress limit, a max. I'm a product marketing manager on Jira Software, and I'm naturally kind of a chaotic person. I seem to always find myself in fast-paced environments. I've been on really dysfunctional teams and in the past been in dysfunctional organizations. The number of times that I've seen Kanban kind of bring method to the madness to change the culture of the organization and just help me get work done has me basically shouting from the rooftops about Kanban. So I actually have a lot to say, and I've broken this conversation up into a series of videos all here on our YouTube channel. So the first thing that I would ask is that you subscribe to the channel so you can hear this whole conversation play out. I want to show you something. One of my favorite things about Kanban is that Kanban starts with what you do now. This is actually one of the Kanban principles. Another being that Kanban respects current roles and responsibilities exactly the way that they are today. You simply apply the Kanban methodology to how you currently work. Another Kanban principle is that Kanban encourages acts of leadership from all levels. It's on the team to work together to make Kanban work for you. Now, if those principles are something you can get excited about, then you might want to start by making a Kanban board. So this is what I wanted to show you. It's a Kanban board that I built to visualize all the concepts we're covering in this video series. I just finished talking about the Kanban principles, and it's important that I started on the right side of the board here. Kanban is a pull system, which means when you have bandwidth, you look to the left and pull cards from left to right. Since I have bandwidth now, I'm ready to start my discussion of Kanban boards. Kanban boards like this one can be built on walls, windows, whiteboards, or with a suite of digital tools like Trello and Jira. Their purpose is to categorize all the stages of work that a work item flows through from something you haven't started to something that's done. This is called a workflow. You'll notice that each stage in the workflow has its own column, and our workflow is super simple. Your workflow might be more complex, but I'd encourage you to start as simple as possible. You can always add more columns later. So for now, I'm done with this quick explanation of Kanban boards. I'm going to take this card from something I'm doing to something that's done. Since I have bandwidth again, I'm ready to move a card from today into doing. Let's kick off our discussion of Kanban cards. For the agile software developers among us, cards should be a familiar concept. 
You can think of them as one Kanban card per user story. For the rest of us, we can just back up. You can think of Kanban cards as being work items. One card per work item. You wanna make cards for all the things you're working on and place them in the appropriate stage of the workflow. Kanban cards should have a title and a description and an owner. You can also add any other helpful information like a due date. Then your card should start to gain a little bit of a history as your team leaves updates on the card as it moves from one stage of the workflow to the other. The Kanban cards should be small enough that your team can make progress on them in a reasonable amount of time. You don't want them so large that it'll take you weeks to move the card forward. And you don't want them so small that it's literally every task that you're working on. Can you imagine how chaotic your board would be if it was every task your team was working on? You want to avoid that. Once you build a board and you fill it with cards, you'll start to realize one of the key benefits of Kanban. You'll see columns that start to bunch up revealing a bottleneck in your workflow. You'll also get a sense of what size cards your team can move forward in a timely manner. These efficiencies we like to call flow, and Kanban is built to help teams flow work better from the backlog to done. Once you understand flow, you can start to measure it. Kanban teams concern themselves with lead time, which is the time that it takes for a card to flow through your workflow from when you start working on it to when you're done, it's in the hands of the customer. And with that, I feel done with my conversations about lead time. And thanks to this board that I built, I actually know that I'm done. I have visual assurance that I've done all the things that I set out to do in this video. It's a good feeling. Okay, very good. So, uh, <clears throat> again, the Kanban, uh, basically, it, uh, they focus on the uh, the flow of the task. Okay, probably I should have uh, more details in the slide. This is a high-level overview of the Kanban board, right? It is different from the, uh, the, the, the Scrum, okay? Scrum, we work in the sprint, but Kanban, we focus on the flow. This is what we need to do. It is very suitable for the, let's say, uh uh like maintenance project or the uh, IT management system IT uh, let's say e solution uh, this is a new ticket from the student about the creating student account uh uh this is uh that's uh, will be in the backlog right this uh, and then today we're going to move it to do once you have one uh uh, this is what we need to do. They move to the to do uh, in the doing. Once they are doing something, they move to the doing and then move to done. That kind of thing. So we focus on the flow, but it's not about the sprint at all. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in the scrum, uh, in the um, uh, and ex and examples of the videos that it, uh, that I create for the trailer, that one is like a uh, something in between. You know. It includes the Scrum as well, and it includes the Kanban principles as well. So it's like a mix together, okay? Because we, uh, for the Scrum, uh, scrum uh, we have the Spring Lane as well, okay? Uh, yep, that's right. Any other questions? Uh, yep. All right. This is an example of the Kanban in the software development. Uh, we keep track the progress. We can use Trello as well. Uh, uh, in the backlog lane, right? We have uh, lots of lots of user stories in the plan who are uh, assigned, who are allocated to these user stories. Once you are developing something, you move to in progress. Okay, move the task uh, from plan to in progress. Uh, once you uh, finish the development, you can move to the develop and probably tester or QA team. Uh, they can start testing. Once they test, they can move to, uh, to the test set, uh, and then probably someone else or uh, we can do code review as well to check whether everything is tested properly and then we can move to the con uh, complete. Okay? Make sense? And 
I'm pretty sure that everyone have used uh, Mozilla Firefox, the web browser before. And this is an example of the Mozilla project, right? Uh, they use the GitHub and then they can use the Kanban as well to schedule the tasks. Uh, how long does it take to fix this bug? How long does it take to uh, implement the new features? What are the, the, the tasks that they are doing at the moment? Uh, that's the in progress and what have been done. So they can include them in the next release. You know, this is an example of the Mozilla Firefox. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's all about Kanban. Very short. Um, next, we will talk about the AI, uh, three AI ceremonies, right? When we do the Scrum framework, I have mentioned before that the AI ceremony is like a meeting, a Scrum event in the uh, Scrum framework. One of them is the sprint planning. Sprint retrospective. I don't have a pen here. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the sprint planning. This is number one. Number two, sprint retro. Uh, the last one is the sprint review. These are the three key uh, agile ceremonies. We can talk. Uh, it can include the daily scrum as well. It can be four, three or four. Either way is fine. Yeah. Okay. There are four meet, four meeting. Okay. Three agile, uh, four agile ceremonies here. Okay. Uh, probably I should say four. Yeah. All right, four agile ceremonies. We have sprint planning, daily scrum, uh, sprint review, sprint retro. During the sprint planning, we talk about how can we craft the sprint goal? What are the plans that we want to achieve? Once we start the sprint, every day you can have the sprint, uh, you can review the team progress as well, whether we are on track or not, right? Uh, the sprint review, we review the work completed in the sprint with the stakeholder, okay? Uh, the last one, sprint review, uh, sprint retro, sorry. Then we review, uh, we review the product development process and identify areas for continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. When we do the sprint planning, the first one, we need to understand uh, how to prioritize the task, which which task that we are going to uh, develop in the sprint, right? And normally we use the Moscow prioritization framework. Okay, it stands for uh, it includes a must have, should have could have and won't have, all right? Must have, it means that it is non-negotiable. This is the minimum viable product, probably not the lock-in feature, all right? It is unable to deliver the end product without this. Can we deliver the Monash Merchant online shopping without the lock-in feature? Yes, probably yes, they can still do the online shopping. Not legal with it, it is unsafe without it. Uh, it is a... Uh, now, any features without uh, that are without uh, this project is not viable. That kind of thing. Okay, should have. It is important but not vital. It may be painful to leave out, but the solution is still viable. Uh, should have, for example, what can you give me some example for the um, uh, let's say online shopping? Let's say advanced search. Okay, advanced search, as advanced product search. Is it important? Yes. Is it vital? Probably not really. Should it have? Yes. Right. Yeah. Could have desirable, but not as important as should have. Could have, for example, um, let's say Bitcoin payment. Okay. Can we pay with the BTC? Bitcoin. Yes, it could. Yeah. But is it really necessary? Probably a post may be the most important one. Right. Now, only do if there is extra time and the budget. Yeah, could have. It could have uh, the Bitcoin payment feature. Won't have this time around at all. Uh, out of budget, nice to have, but has no real impact, right? What, which one, which feature won't have? Uh, we, we don't need to have it in the Monash online, uh, Monash version. Yeah. What is that? We don't need it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it really depends on the client. All right. Uh, yeah. So after you finish the sprint planning, right? The next step is the sprint review. So you start re uh, you start having a meeting uh, to discuss the current states of the product, and then uh, it often takes place at the end of the sprint. Or oh, yeah. at the end of the sprint, at the end of the sprint, we review the the what we have done the, during the sprint. Yeah, and then it lasts for an hour, okay, per, I would say per sprint. Normally, the product owner, scrum master, and the team should attend, uh, come together. Other stakeholders may choose to attend as well, like, uh, yeah, client, you know, or sprint review or product review, they are the same, all right? Yeah, 
So the team should show the sprint outcome to the PO or the stakeholder. That's a key point. And then uh, we normally finalize whether the user story uh, that we uh, that is part of the sprint, right? Whether it is approved, completed, or partially approved or reject, right? Okay. So yeah, uh, if uh, uh, if they are partially approved or reject, so it will go back to the spring backlog again. And this is what we want to avoid as much as possible, right? During the spring review, it is a good opportunity for the client representatives to collaborate with the team. Uh, yeah, we, we discuss with the client, we show the product to the client, and then we ask them uh, for feedback, right? Whether they like the product that we develop or not. Mm -hmm. To conduct the sprint review, okay, uh, normally the product owner start by explaining what has or has not been done in the sprint. Uh, note capital D done, uh, it means that done according to the definitions of done. I have uh, discussed about the definitions of done in uh, some lecture before that it's not just only uh, we finish the implementation, but we have tested and the user accept it as well, all right? Uh, if it has not been tested to your satisfaction, it's not done. Yeah, as I mentioned before, you have to test it and it's done, right? The team talks about how well the sprint, uh, how well the sprint went. Okay, so uh, during the sprint review, we will discuss like, is there anything wrong, uh, any problem or not, right? Uh, the team and the PO uh, discuss together and mark the task, uh, uh, whether the user story is completed or done or not. Okay, yep, that's a key point. And then during the sprint review, we normally uh, discuss about the state of the product backlog as well. When is the project uh, project likely to be completed given the current velocity? Uh, and is there any good opportunity for the P And it is also a good opportunity for the PO and the team to do some release planning as well. Like once we are close to the, uh, uh, after the few sprint uh, have been completed, we can talk about when should we release the product, that kind of thing as well. Uh, yep, and what not to do, okay, sprint review, uh, not to do. First, the red tape, what is that? Some teams uh, treat the sprint review as an acceptance meeting, okay? Sprint, a formal occasion where the client representative or the PO sign off on the completion of a milestone. Uh, this is not the best practice at all, okay? Sprint review, we just deliver the working software products. It's a little bit too hard to ask them to sign off. Hey, we have delivered this feature. We finished the first milestone. Sign off and then pay the money. Not like that, okay? This is uh, not a good practice. The product owner should already know the state of the project, okay? Form, it is a formal meeting and long and tedious. This is what we should not do, okay? Sprint review should happen every sprint. Sign off is unlikely to be needed that frequently, yeah. We normally have a two-week uh, sprint review. It should not be like a milestone. Milestone could be like six months, you know? After a uh, serial sprint, then we can have a milestone uh, side off whether the product, product, uh, pro, sorry, the product is, uh, is uh, delivered on time, that kind of thing or not. If you really need a side off meeting, schedule a longer time box with only PO, Scrum Master, and the client representative. When we do the side off meeting, we don't need the dev team as part of the side off meeting, you know? So it can be a separate one. Yep. What we should not do as part of the sprint review, okay? The most important thing, broken demo, okay? Ideally, you need to show a version of the product that has only had done stories integrated to it. What it means? HI, okay? Uh, 12 principles. We focus on the working software over the comprehensive documentation. Working software, it means that it should work, right? It should not be broken at all, okay? And you should present, uh, what is that? They might assume that backend functionality is also complete. Yeah, you want to uh, demo uh, the, the stories that you have considered as done, yeah. But if somebody tries to demo partially done code, it might crash and otherwise embarrass the team, right? So this is what should you what you should not um, do at all, okay, during the sprint review. But what if uh, your stakeholder hate your products, right? So what to do? It's true that your potential end users might give you a, uh, give you really negative feedback. Hey, I don't like it. Oh, the UI sucks, you know. Ah, oh, what to do? Okay. But it is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You, probably you should uh, seek for feedback, seek uh, for comments, right? Uh, seek for uh, suggestion. 
if you don't like the UI, how can we make it better? That's the key point. You need to get, uh, you need to find out what is the action items. What are the actionable guidance? Once you know the problem, you can start fixing it. But you need to uh, understand from the client how can we improve it. That's the feedback, constructive feedback, not just say, "Hey, um, uh, yeah, the UI sucks. I don't like it." Yeah. It's uh, not, it's not really useful, okay. But you can talk about uh, what kind of uh, what kind of UI that you are looking for. Are you uh, we have aligned the UI with the design principles? This already uh, is it something enough or not? That kind of thing, you know. You can start talking about it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Retos, uh, sprint retrospective. That's the last one already. This is the last event of the sprint. Basically, the team gathers together to decide what to improve, right? What went well in the sprint? How can we improve it better? This is more about the mindset model, okay? It's about continuous improvement. It's not uh, something really like um, uh, strict or, you know, uh, it's about mindset, yeah. And uh, what else? It's all done, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's very flexible and agile. Uh, there's no format here. Normally, we you can just uh, create one presentation slide, take note, you know, what went well in the sprint. Hey, I did this feature really well. I'm very proficient in this, blah, blah, blah. How can we improve? Or oh, there are some areas around uh, topic, blah, 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 that uh, we don't know yet. How can we work with the API, this feature? Uh, da, da, da. I need to study a little bit more, a little bit, blah, 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 blah. You know, that, that's a retro, you know, you, you keep the document here. Yeah. And to do the retro, uh, sprint uh, retrospective, right? It's more about the individual reflection. So before the meeting, you can spend 15 minutes uh, noting down a little bit as well, what worked for you uh, during this sprint, what didn't work for you, and then you can uh, type, uh, take some note, what should be the concrete suggestion for the improvement as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not just only complain, right? Uh, you need to say, uh, how, how can we make things better, all right? And you can share this information among the team as well. You know, you can brainstorm how can we improve things uh, together. You know, uh, what uh, what if we got the velocity wrong? Uh, this is one of the common issue that you might end up with uh, uh, during the the sprint review or sprint retool, right? Velocity is the speed of the project. I should have one slide, uh, something here. No, it's gone. I think I talked about the burn down chart before, okay? Some some week, at some week. And then we talk about the velocity in the burn down chart as well, whether we are on track or not, right? And uh, whether the velocity is in the good speed, good pace or not, is about whether we over and overestimate or underestimate the, the, the sprint or the user story, that kind of thing. So this is the opportunity during the sprint retro, right? To discuss together, So for example, Oh, we need to work with the database. Oh, we need to develop the system with the database. Oh my goodness. We thought that it's going to be easy, but however, uh, the database system changed a lot, changed the API. We need to learn a little bit more about this. So uh, we a little bit uh, underestimate uh, the amount of effort that need to be done to connect to the database. This is an example, all right? Yeah, so you can brainstorm the solution during the repo, uh, retro, uh, perspective, uh, sprint retro as well, all right? Solution, okay, uh, what is that? One, do not think what I'm going to say here. <laughs> Probably I can skip, yeah. I'm aware of the time, yep. Yeah. Ah, no, what I mean is that once you come up with the uh, the problems, right, uh, and then you brainstorm the solution, there are so many solutions that you can uh, uh, think about and work on it, right? But there are four key points that you need to think about, okay, very important. Once you come up with a solution, you need to decide whether you want to do it or not. And one solution is that do not think, okay? Uh, for example, oh, the client wants uh, us to, uh, wants the database to connect to the no SQL instead of the traditional my SQL SQL. This is an example. Then, uh, this is a roadblock uh, for the sprint already. And then we need to discuss, should we do it? Is this something that we need to do? Uh, uh, or we just don't do it, right? Because if we do it, it will impact uh, the design architecture and everything. This is an example, do nothing. Or we do something minor. Oh, instead of doing connect to the uh, no SQL, we're gonna use uh, the other uh, framework instead, you know, which is a little bit easier to do. 
or we need to change. Yes, we want to do, you know, or do something radical. We're gonna change the database frame uh, system, and then we're gonna change the whole code as well, uh, from Ruby on Rails to Python to Django to whatsoever, you know, change everything. Yeah. It really depends. Okay. Probably this is the last topic. Okay, the, of uh, today lecture is about software contract. In real world, when we develop the piece of software, let's say we are in a software house, we need to uh, create a contract to uh, or the agreement to, of course, to get the money from the clients. Okay, but typically the software can be developed at at the different uh, environment first internally or the externally. Right, internally, let's say code, we have development team, uh, and then. We have internal software development team. Yeah, we just develop based on the project, uh, based on the features whatsoever. But sometimes uh, we can outsource to the software house company as well. And then it requires a contract, right? The contract, there are two different uh, types of the contract, the close and the open. Close, this is the scope. This is the features that we are going to develop. And this is the budget, sign off, done, okay? This is the, the budget, million dollars. We're going to sign the contract here. Open scope, it means that we're going to sign the contract based on the, um, uh, what is that, uh, man out, okay? Uh, we adopt AI development practices. We can uh, help you as long as you want. Um, and then the scope is open. We will charge based on the, the actual effort that we spend. Okay, that's the difference yeah, between the closed scope contract or the open scope, right? The close one, as I mentioned before, it is defined by the customer. This is the app that we want. This is the price. This is the timeline. And then we, you need to deliver. Okay. But for the open scope, uh, yeah, it's more like iteration, the milestone, pay by the man out. The contract can be renewed. Okay. Advantage is that we can focus on the quality. We can avoid uh, deliver. Uh, like a late, late penalty or late deliveries and that kind of thing as well. And can, each client can also easily change the supplier or change the requirement as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, this is a uh, different uh, angles here, right? The contract development and the product development and the in-house development. Okay. Contract. That's the uh, uh, you sign a contract. The, what, what I mean here is that the, you, uh, I need the pen, okay, pen, draw. So this is a client. This is a client. This is a product owner. And this is a team, okay? The product owner will work together with the client to elicit the requirement. That's an assessment one, right? You get the requirement. This is what you need to do. And then you talk to the development team. Hey. This is the next thing that you need to do. This is the next thing, uh, the next user story that you need to deliver, that kind of thing. This is more of like a contract development, okay? Yep, this is uh, this style. Now, the product development, this is another style, okay? So what I mean is that, I think it is quite similar to the uh, contract, this one, okay? We have the product owner, talk to the user, talk to the pro, uh, potential users as well. And then the product owner work closely with the team, development team. In-house development, uh, similar thing as well. We also have the product owner as a man in the middle, but instead of signing a contract with the external parties, this is more like a, uh, they are part of the same organization. Yeah, That's a key point. All right, back, back to the flag quiz. Probably this is the last part of the quiz and that should be less than 10, okay? Now, go to the flux.qa slash mt8ng2 again. What is the Kanban? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope I don't, I don't go too fast uh, at the end. Yeah. Uh, let me know your feedback uh, in the ED stem as well. Uh, every feedback is uh, counted. I read everyone, everything. Okay. Uh, I take this feedback seriously. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna pause now and then next. Um. Ha. Huh. 
um, yeah, it's kind of like interrelated, you know. The Kanban, is the technical term of the Kanban is actually, it means the, the visual signal or the car. Yeah, that was described in the uh, video, right? But also, if we talk about the Kanban, Kanban uh, uh, project management, it is also the project management methodology as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the primary objective of the Kanban? What is the goal of the Kanban? We focus on the uh, flow. It is used, it is created in the uh, industrial. It is uh, designed for the industrial engineering, that kind of thing. Yeah. Why? Why do we need to do that? What is the key objective of the Kanban? Mm -hmm. All right, um, I'm gonna pause now and then see the result. Actually, oh, yeah, so that we got a mixed answer here, right? To maximize productivity, to minimize waste, to optimize resource allocation, to maintain a sustainable workflow. I would say that um, uh, it's a little bit of mix of all answers together. Uh, Probably the answer is not really clear here, uh, but it could be all of the above as well. I mean, everything here, okay? So maybe this question is not well designed. Sorry, yeah, let's move to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> In Kanban, what does the term WIP stand for? What is that? What does the term WIP stand for? Yep, quick, easy one. Should be work in progress. Let's see the result. Yeah, that's right. Work in progress. Okay, this is the correct answer for the Kanban. Uh -huh. uh, what is the significance of visualizing work in Kanban? Why do we need to visualize the work in Kanban? First, uh, it helps team to identify the bottleneck. I Sorry, uh, continue. Yep. Uh, or it enhances communication among the team members, it provides transparency into the workflow, or all of the above. Mm -hmm. Why do we need, uh, what is the benefits or significance of visualizing work in Kanban? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yep, the answer should be all of the above. Yeah. Thank you, okay, well done. 96% <laughs> of the students got it right. What, uh, sorry, which of the following is not a core principles of Kanban? Okay, which one is not the Kanban? Okay, which one? Oh, <laughs> what is that? Which one? Not, okay, not a core principles of the Kanban. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, show the results now. Pause the quiz and then see the result. Should be implement strict deadline. Yeah, so implement strict deadline is not part of the Kanban at all. At all. Kanban doesn't have a deadline. We focus on the flow of the work and try to maximize the productivity of the team members, right? Remove the waste, eliminate the waste as much as possible. It is used in the uh, Toyota production system. For example, you have the spoiler, you have the windscreen, you have whatsoever, the, the wheels. You need to assemble everything together and it's like a pipeline. You want to make sure that the, the workflow is like a continuous and remove the waste, the wait time, that kind of thing, as much as possible. So we want to, yeah, uh, check the workflows uh, in the video, you know, uh, from Atlassian, uh, workflow, uh, visual insurance, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a limit work in progress and we want to optimize for the predictability as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Which of the following is not a category in the Moscow method, uh, Moscow tax prioritization? Which one is that? Mm -hmm. 
very easy one again okay Moscow okay let's see the results I'm gonna pause now should be would have yeah what is the W it should be one half okay W should be one half, not would have. Okay. Okay. Next, which uh, category in the Moscow method represents requirements that are crucial for the project success? Okay. Which one? Which one uh, that uh, represents the requirement or the user story or the tasks that are crucial for the project success? Okay. Which one is that? yeah and yeah thank you everyone for your active participation anyway if you have any feedback comment don't forget to uh put uh, them uh, right in the ed stem as well um yeah i would love to hear from you yeah so this one should be must have that's right okay they are crucial so it should be must have yeah yeah very crucial it is critical for the project success it's not uh uh one half okay yep uh, which one? Which category in the Moscow method represents requirement that won't be implemented in the current project iteration but could be considered for the future? Mm -hmm. I think the good thing of having the flag quiz is that uh, uh, you get to know whether you understand the concepts of the lecture uh, correctly or not as well. And I also know as well whether you understand it uh, correctly or not as well. Right? So it's like a, we learn from each other. Yeah. Then I can clarify uh, on the fly as well whether uh, about any misconception, that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Next, uh, pause now and see the result. Oh, actually, won't be implemented. I would say that it should be one half. Okay, I would say one half. Okay, it could be considered in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is a software contract? What is that? Mm -hmm. What is a software contract? In real world scenarios, in real world practices, we need to write a contract and uh, I have been working uh, with this a lot. Oh, lots of legal communication, you know. That's another language that I need to learn more. I mean legal language. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pause the quiz now and five, four, three, two, one. Okay, uh, should be A, okay. Clearly A, it should be A, this contract. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, what is that? Governing the use development. Oh, sorry. Um, the contract should be a written document outlining the technical spec of the software, right? I think. Um, contract is about we discuss how can we develop the software, that kind of thing. But I don't think it's about the use development or licensing of software. Uh, yeah, it's real. It's a little bit unclear here. I would say. Yeah. Okay. All right. Probably. Uh, that's all for today. We have lots of questions, and I have clarified a lot uh, about the detailed assessment. Uh, I give you an overview to everyone. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, don't forget to ask in the ED stem as well. And uh, today, uh, for this week, we will have the presentation. The um, uh, for the assessment one, I look forward to uh, uh, attend and then yeah, next week will be the mid semester break. So, okay, I hope you enjoy the holiday and then I will see you in the next two weeks after you get back from holiday. All right. Bye bye. Very good. Thank you. See you.